It's a rare find, this video. Very disturbing. The pictures that show China's real plans for the Pacific. No legal process involved. None at all. Coming up on 60 Minutes. This is one of the most profitable drug routes in the world. How Fiji has been targeted. The Australian government thinks that you might be involved in organised crime. Don't stop. Is he Beijing's number one influence agent in Fiji? Undoubtedly. Beijing's dirty tactics. Cannot afford to have big enemies. To control paradise. That's how empires work. That's next. When China's powerful foreign minister Wang Yi met his Australian counterpart Penny Wong a few days ago, the pair, albeit awkwardly, smiled and shook hands for the cameras. But behind closed doors, there's no doubt the atmosphere would have been much more tense. Both nations have plenty of differences to work through, including their ongoing battle for influence in the Pacific. Now, while Canberra takes a more softly, softly approach to our near neighbours, that's not Beijing's way of doing business. Tonight, we reveal some of the downright dirty tactics China uses to assert itself over tiny nations like Fiji. This is vision that beggars belief. A battalion of Chinese police officers is preparing to fly en masse to undertake an operation on foreign soil. Their targets are alleged Chinese cyber scammers operating in Fiji. But the Chinese police don't bother involving the Fiji legal system. Instead, they engage in an extraordinary display of hard power. They track down 77 suspects, handcuff and hood them, and fly them back to China, into the black hole that is the country's brutal justice system. No legal process involved? None at all, no. No extradition treaty? No. No court case? No, nothing like that. It's been described as a mass kidnapping, a fair term? Uh, I'd say a rendition would be the way you'd describe it. Until now, few have seen the video outside of China. That likely would have remained a secret if it weren't for Graham Smith, an associate professor at the Australian National University. If the Chinese can send police on a plane without so much as a, as a blink from the Fijian government, what path does that lead us down? It's a very disturbing path because these sorts of operations are happening all over the world. Our, our team estimated this is happening twice a week, every week, all over the globe. But the Pacific example is a pretty concerning one. The video was released by a Chinese security agency in 2017, after Beijing convinced Fiji to enter into an unprecedented policing partnership. As you can see, it paved the way for incredible access and is just one of the many ways the Chinese Communist Party is seeking to exert power in the region. How deep did the CCP, did the Chinese government get in to Fiji? They got in very, very deep. Tonight, we take you inside China's secret efforts to exert influence in the Pacific. This is a multi-spectrum battle for influence and really nothing's off the table. And reveal the frightening new chapter in the fierce battle unfolding on our doorstep. You're saying that Chinese entities... They could be. They could be involved. Maybe involved in organised crime. Yes, I'm worried about that. How Beijing is using alleged gangsters as political proxies. You need people who know people, and often criminals have a really good Rolodex. And we expose the one man our authorities believe poses a grave danger to our security. Are you uh, Jao Fu Gang? Yes. My, my name is Nick McKenzie. The top of the top of targets in this country. Yes, to me. Come, come, please. With its palm trees and crystal clear water, Fiji has long been a playground for Australian tourists. But this tropical paradise is now at the centre of an intense geopolitical battle. Why is Fiji such an important player in the Pacific? It's really the regional hub. It's where a lot of the regional headquarters are based for all the major organisations. And it's a, a really 
very effective functioning democracy. It's also a diverse economy in a way that a lot of the others aren't. Unlike most specific countries, Fiji isn't actually dependent on China. What does China really want in the South Pacific? It wants as much access and as much influence there as possible. Duck in here, what happened? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Good morning, I'm uh, Nick McKenzie. The man Sorry. caught in the middle is Nick. Fijian Prime Minister Sitiveni Rambuka, a former coup leader and military man. He's hardly used to being at the centre of someone else's fight. But whether he likes it or not, a fierce battle is unfolding on his doorstep. Do you feel like you're really stuck sometimes between China's ambitions, desires to exert influence here, and America, Australia's push to exert influence here? I feel stuck only because I understand Australia and America, and I do not fully understand China's uh, agenda. Are you cautious? I am. Why? Because I do not want to upset uh, the, the stability of the region. And uh, looking into the future, we cannot afford to have big enemies. For now, though, Ram Booker is juggling the attention of those trying to woo him. In fact, China, the US and Australia are all vying for his loyalty with tit-for-tat offers of financial and security support. It's a diplomatic tap dance, but the Fijian Prime Minister says he isn't so easily won over. Prime Minister, what do you see as the greatest threat to security in the region right now? The threat to security for us is really uh, when we get so... Uh, low and weak in our economy that people can buy into our favour. What do you mean, buy into your favour? Well, give us things that we cannot refuse and thereby increasing their influence and profile in the affairs of Fiji. Are you talking about China there? Anybody. Anybody who wants to come in and overly load up with goodies so that we just go and do whatever they do. We can be influenced by fear. You can be influenced by uh, reward. Uh, there are many ways to influence. Few countries know that better than the People's Republic of China. All over Fiji are symbols of Beijing's ambitions, big and small investments in the local community, representative of China's growing clout in the region. But a much more covert, underhanded form of influence is also in play directed by Beijing. And it's carried out by this man, Zhao Fugang. Who is he? He's really, in many ways, the front man for the Chinese state in Fiji. What's his game? His game is about furthering the interests of the Chinese state. There's no other serious player in town. It's not an official role, but Zhao Fugang is arguably China's most important asset in Fiji. A wealthy businessman and powerful political operative, Zhao has spent 25 years cultivating relationships with Fiji's elite. He owns this hotel, the Yulai. It doesn't look like much, but over the years, it's played host to a string of powerful politicians and influential people, including former Prime Minister Frank Bainimarama and former Police Chief Sitiveni Kilio. The Zhao Fugangs of the world they don't sleep much. They're always up to stuff. These are people who are looking to advance interests and they're looking to advance them 24-7. It's a completely different scenario to what we had 20 years ago. You say the game's changed? Game's totally changed, yeah. But while he's been trying to advance Beijing's interests in Fiji, he's also allegedly been running a side hustle. Our investigation here in Fiji has uncovered that Zhao Fugang may be much more than the Chinese Communist Party's most powerful agent of influence. Secret intelligence gathered by agencies back in Canberra alleges that Zhao is the most influential member of a powerful organised crime network spanning the Pacific and posing a grave threat to Australia. It's an extraordinary, if unproven, claim for Australia to make. Not least because the man at the centre of it is so strongly backed by the Chinese state. From Canberra, Australian intelligence and security agencies have watched Zhao Fugang's activities in Fiji with alarm. And now they're waging a secret counterattack. 
We've seen confidential briefings written by two federal agencies that describe Zhao as being responsible for the development of Chinese political interests in Fiji. But they also allege he's associated with a range of criminal activities impacting Australia, including large illicit drug shipments, money laundering, migration fraud and human trafficking. The Australian Criminal Intelligence Commission is so concerned about Zhao, it recently secretly designated him an Australian priority organisation target, placing Zhao at the very top of the nation's most serious alleged crime threats. It's the first time a political operative has been targeted in this way. How significant is the APOT, the priority organisation target, listing? What does, it, what does it mean in layman's terms? In layman's terms, it means it's the top of the top of targets in this country. John Coyne is a former senior federal police intelligence officer, turned analyst with the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. Very similar to the old FBI's 10 most wanted. Um, what we're talking about here is the most serious organised crime groups that impact on Australia are listed here, that have direct impacts on Australia. The significance of that should not be underplayed. What does it say about what Australian agencies consider Jao Fu Gang to be up to? To be listed for both being an organised crime figure and also for undertaking foreign influence operations um, is significant and, to my knowledge, has not occurred before. There can be no doubt that behind this allegation is a belief that he has been undertaking um, significant criminal activity. Well, I cut his uh, Let me show you. And as you'll see, this, it's uh, an allegation Zhao Fu Gang doesn't want to hear. Yes, uh, don't me. Can, hey, can, oh, please. Can, can no, I no, ask? No, no, no. Sitting high above Suva, the Yulai Hotel isn't as flash as some of Fiji's tourist resorts. But up the lift, to the third floor, is where you'll find the most powerful political operative China has in the country. Are you uh, Jiao Fu Gang? Yes. My, my name is Nick McKenzie. And, quite extraordinarily, Australian authorities allege he's also one of the most serious organised criminals in the South Pacific suspected of facilitating large shipments of drugs to Australia via Fiji. If you want to get drugs to Australia, Fiji is a great stopping off point. It's the logistical hub for the Pacific. It's got the biggest airport, it's got the biggest ports. A lot of sea traffic goes through there. So we've seen a huge amount of drugs coming through. This really is the hub of the Pacific. Aubrey Belford is the Pacific editor for the Organised Crime and Corruption Reporting Project. Over the last few years, he's watched this stretch of the Pacific Ocean become a drug superhighway, a coastal paradise now at the mercy of powerful criminal networks who are using Fiji as a transit point for huge drug shipments. So the thing that you, you have to understand about it is this is one of the most profitable drug routes in the world. If you can get a piece of this, you make incredible amounts of money. So any organised crime group that is worth its salt wants a piece of this and a lot of them have gotten a piece of this. I mean, we honestly don't know how much drugs are coming through here. We just know that the amounts are unprecedented. Is it fair to say the Fijian authorities are overwhelmed with the drug trade? I think it is fair to say that the Fijian authorities are struggling. Fiji really kind of missed out on this growth of meth and cocaine trafficking through the country for years. It was not taken to be a priority and it was really something that was allowed to fester. So right now they're trying to play catch up on tackling this huge, very sophisticated multi-billion dollar, you know, globe spanning trade in drugs and they're having a really hard time of it. In fact, Fiji is in the thick of a war on drugs, one that is rapidly intensifying. In January this year, police intercepted the biggest drug haul the country has ever seen. The 4.8 tonnes of methamphetamine, worth nearly one and a half billion dollars, was bound for Australia. Well, there's a lot of drugs going on everywhere, mate. I mean, almost five, five tonnes of drug discovery, man. That's, that's... It's really scary, huh? You know this. Peo Tiko Ndua Ndua is Fiji's Minister for Home Affairs. 
as the man responsible for the security of his country. There is no greater priority than combating the threat of the transnational drug trade and the people driving it. Who's behind it? Well, there's a lot of people behind it. Some have been arrested. I'm sure there are others out there, you know, standing behind the curtain, maybe the big ones. But definitely I can confirm that they were not produced here. The minister readily admits he needs all the help he can get when it comes to fighting organised crime in his region. And our government is more than willing to assist. Just a few weeks ago, the Australian Air Force delivered this C-27 to Suva. On loan to the Fijian government, it's extra eyes in the sky to deter criminals. It's the neighbourly thing to do and a generous offer of support. But behind the scenes, Australia is also waging a secret war against China's advances in the Pacific. As the Minister for Home Affairs, you receive intelligence from your Western partners? I receive intelligence from our friends, yes. Yeah. Are you aware of the owner of the Yulai Hotel, a man called Zhao Fugang? Yes, I am, yeah. Are you aware of the concerns held by Australia and America about his activities? Well, all I know is that there is this intelligence that is provided to us where Australia is concerned about him, yes. We value this uh, intelligence that we receive, but we need to push it through our own system with regards to what we do here. The intelligence accuses Zhao Fugang of facilitating the very drug trade Fiji and Australia are trying to stop. The Australian Federal Police has listed Zhao as a suspected member of a Tier 1 Pacific Syndicate. It's claimed he seeks to provide cover for Chinese organised crime and is providing a Fijian safe hub for drug shipments. Documents allege Zhao has been deeply connected to international drug trafficking networks targeting Australia since at least 2004. It's little wonder Fiji's Prime Minister Sitaveni Rambuka is also wary of China's organised crime links. I am uh, suspicious of that. I'm worried about that. And I do not want to, not innocently, but uh, not unobjectively or unthinkingly open the door to someone that could turn out to be uh, not a friend you had hoped they would turn out to be. You're saying that Chinese entities... They could be. They could be involved. Maybe involved in organised crime. It would hurt China if I said we do not want China because they could be implicated. Do you believe the Chinese state itself might be enabling, supporting, greenlighting serious organised crime in the Pacific with the express purpose of harming Australia? I think they are definitely condoning the activities of criminals where they are useful to the Chinese state. According to ANU Associate Professor Graham Smith, it's a new and disturbing form of statecraft being used by Beijing, another strategy for advancing China's influence in the region. And what purpose are they serving for China? Well, you need fixers. You need people who know people, and often criminals have a really good Rolodex. If you can find people that are successful business people and involved in criminal activities, then they're often your most effective vectors in country because they know people and they're willing to do the stuff that the state doesn't want to do. It seems like an extraordinary foreign policy tool to use serious organised crime figures to advance, in this case, Beijing's aims. That's how empires work. For years, Zhao Fugang is suspected of being central to that policy, operating in the shadows, until we showed up. Do, do you work for the Chinese Communist Party? Yes. You do? Yeah. And what do you do for the well, Chinese... Where are you from? Pardon me? Where are you from? From Australian television, from 60 Minutes Australia. Yes, so do for me. Can, hey, please. Can, can, no, I, no, ask, no, no, no. can no. I ask you, the, the Australian government thinks that you might be involved in organised crime, is no, that...? Stop. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. The, the Australian government... Yeah? ..thinks you may be involved in organised crime, in drug trafficking, in serious organised crime. Can I ask you about that? I you say something. Uh, you Zhao Fugang denied the allegations. And while the Australian intelligence doesn't mean that he's guilty of the accusations, the fact they've been made is a political problem for both Fiji and China. How will Beijing respond to the prescription, the designation of one of its key agents of influence, one of its key state-backed figures in Fiji 
as, according to Australian intelligence, an alleged organised crime kingpin. Behind closed doors, if the allegations are true, um, the CCP potentially will lose a significant influence asset in the region. Analyst John Coyne says Australia's targeting of Zhao Fugang will enrage the Chinese Communist Party. Like all forms of corruption, when a light is shined on it, um, even if there's never a prosecution, if a light is shined on an activity of corruption and exposes it, it will stop it. So from the Beijing's perspective, it is a lost opportunity and potentially, if the allegations are correct, then um, it will have a significant impact on uh, their influence operations in the region. But it won't stop Beijing working towards the kind of access it had during this 2017 Chinese police operation carried out on Fijian soil. This video was created at the height of an unprecedented policing partnership between the two countries, based on a memorandum of understanding that gave Chinese police extensive reach in Fiji, an agreement that was suspended by Prime Minister Sitiveni Rambuka in 2023. One of the first things you did when elected was to tear up the policing MOU between Fiji and China. Why did you do this? I did it because I didn't understand what it was for. What is the status right now of that MOU between China and Fiji? It is still suspended. It has not been uh, cancelled. And uh, right now there is uh, no need to bring it back uh, quickly. But just 24 hours after our interview with the Prime Minister, Fiji's Home Affairs Minister revealed he had decided to relaunch the controversial security deal. We have decided that we will continue along the same memorandum of agreement that we had previously. So that MOU with China is back on the table? That's correct, yes. Well, respectfully, the Prime Minister just yesterday said it was still on ice. No, at the moment, we are continuing that relationship. I have assured the Chinese authority that we are continuing along the same line under the endorsement of the government. That's it. Yeah, that's what we are. The mixed messages from Fiji's two most powerful men betray the tensions in the region and will ring alarm bells in Canberra and Washington as Australia tries to counter China's advances in the battle for influence in the Pacific. Fiji's Home Affairs Minister told us he's re-enlivened, he's put back on the table this police deal, this MOU between Fiji and China. Does that concern you? It's it's a concern, but not a surprise, because Fiji is dealing with some really serious issues of transnational crime around drugs, and I think they're desperate. Um, they want to, to find a way to address these, and they know that it's the source of a lot of this crime, these are all coming from China. You say they're desperate, why? I think they're desperate because a lot of this crime is beyond their control, so they need all the help they can get. So I, I can completely understand why they've signed on to it. Is it a good idea? That's not for me to say. If China crosses a line in its conduct, are you prepared to call them out? Yes, we're prepared. And what is your warning to China if they go too far? Uh, we will have to tell them, we know you are a great power, but we are both equally sovereign states in the world. Hello, I'm Nick McKenzie. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.